Hey guys, Big Rad 3! Ted is back again. And I want to start my Submania. Now, uh, and before I do that, I have some stuff I need to clear. I saw some comments in my lockdown video. My bad, my totally not worth anyone's time. Which is what I will call TNA pay-per-views when I believe they suck. When they're good, I'll just think of a clever... Uh, what's the word? Who gives a fuck? Um, acronym? Yeah. Whatever. For that, um, I will... D you guys don't know this, but whenever WWE has a bad pay-per-view, I will do it also. I'm not to sound like a WWE mark, but I haven't seen one since Survivor Series. I still thought Survivor Series was a little better than Genesis, just because for Survivor Series, I loved all three Survivor Series elimination matches. All three, even the Divas match. They made the Divas match entertaining, which is extremely hard for the WWE. I like the Shawn Michaels one. I especially like the Batista one. And I like the main event. I didn't. I thought it was good. Maybe not Survivor Series main event quality. Maybe I would have given the match three and a half stars. Maybe three and three quarters, but I doubt it. Probably three and a half, three and a quarter. And I liked all four matches. Matches I didn't like uh, the casket match and the WWE title match. There probably was another match, but I can't remember. And to be honest, I wasn't a, too big of a fan of Genesis. Like I said, I liked Angle Abyss, but not much else. Uh, if the first, the opening match, the uh, the uh, I still call it the rankings match. That's what it used to be called in 2006. The X Division X rankings match. Um, it's good. I just seen it so many times, and I thought they could have done a better way. I like seeing the rankings again. That was cool. That they brought those back in a while. But like Eric Young to me is not your ideal T TNA X Division superstar. And I watch the X rankings because I want to see the top X Division superstars. Like I was really happy at Summer 2006 when Senshi won it or Low Key or whatever the fuck his name is in WWE, which I heard was pretty fucking weird. Because I loved his work, and I really wanted to win. He won. Um, there was another one a few months prior where I think Shocker won, even though I didn't. No, I don't think it was him, but... <laughs> Whatever, I like. I only like the rankings when I see my fate, when I see a really, really, really cool X Division wrestler win. And didn't get it in Eric Young, that's my opinion. I thought both main events, I was expecting a lot more from AJ Sting, and I thought Joe Steiner was weak. I thought Christian Booker T, which I actually like some of their work in WWE, I thought that match was weak. Angle Abyss duh, did it for me, but for Survivor Series, I, lo I love the Sir Elimination matches. Well, I thought both pay-per-views were bad, because for Survivor Series, you expect a lot more than what I got. I, I liked the elimination matches. I didn't love them. I liked it. And I liked them in event. The main event gave three and a quarter stars for crying out loud. I would have given that pay-per-view a 6.5, a 7. I probably would have given Genesis a 6. That's how close. No, not 7, 6.5. I would have given Sriracha 6.5, Genesis a 6. That's how close it was for me. But I still thought Survivor Series was better, but I thought Survivor Series as a whole, I expected a lot more from a WWE pay-per-view, especially Survivor Series. Maybe not from a WWE pay-per-view, but for Survivor Series, which has proven to be doing fairly well over the past few years. And I was just really I was disappointed when I came out of it. But I will do an acronym for that. I don't know why I said it. As some people say I said it, but I don't think I did. If I did, I'm sorry. I didn't say that that was Teenage Wars pay-per-view this year. If I did, I apologize. For me, because I didn't see against all the Destination X, I chose not to see it live. Um, and <clears throat> I chose not to see it, so I'm comparing Lockdown and Genesis, and Genesis was a little better. I'm not going to rag too much Lockdown. I was a little harsh, but hey, for you guys who think I was unfair, take all my ratings, my star ratings, multiply them by two, add them up, and divide it by eight. You'll get like 5.6 or something like that. And then I had to decide, okay, you're going to give it a 5 or a 6. And I decided to go with a 5 because I took off points for Mick Foley winning the title and for the horrible, horrible, horrible production values of the whole show. I mean, come on. The one, one point of the lockdown, you had the six camera angles where you couldn't see shit. You couldn't see anything. They thought, oh, help. Definitely not. Even the the, the double side view when it did with uh, Team 3D and Beer Money, not good. So, very disappointed with that. And I decided to lower my estimation and bump it down to a 5 out of 10. People saying, well, how can you have three star match three, three star matches? Simple, because I had two one-star matches and three two-star matches. So yeah, it's very easy to get 
Number five, I told you I averaged my ratings. The only pay per view I haven't averaged my ratings at this year was WrestleMania. With WrestleMania, I would have gotten a seven out of ten, and I bumped it up to an eight just because Taker and H2K gave their heart outs. I enjoyed it a lot more. It's WrestleMania, and I liked it better than No Way Out, and I gave No Way Out an eight. So I'm kind of forced to give WrestleMania an eight. Okay, uh, for ROH, I haven't seen any of my DVDs. You'll see why later. I mean, come on, I'm stacked. Look. The packaging is still there. I'm pretty sure you can see it on there. This is my first DVD I was going to watch. Joe Punk. And uh, my IWA Mitsa DVDs. And my Chikara DVDs is what I wouldn't want to talk about. And my two other ROH Netflix DVDs. We'll get to a while. Let's get to some mania. I'm not going to go to the famous guys. Like, to me, I like rooting for the underdogs. And I like rooting for companies you guys should check out. This and that. So, I'm not going to put, like, True Slayer on there. I'm not going to put Bill and Doug. Believe it or not, if, if I had to sub the top 10 guys, Bill and Doug would be there, believe it or not. Although, if you, if you really hate uh, wrestling that much, I mean, if you really hate watching them bash them that much, then it's not for you. You really won't enjoy it. Okay, let's get started. Um, the first guy I want to plug is Kyler187. He has a fair amount of subscribers. I think over 200, maybe even over 300. Uh, but really, he makes lame moments. Oh, he made a new one. In fact, lame mo 452 lame moments in wrestling video, where where they're really cool. They uh, he takes basically a crap a wrestle crap moment, and he has a whole twilight effect to it. I'll put a link next to his link. I'll put a link of one of my favorites. I, I'm not. I don't know which one it is now. I'll have to look through his list and pick one of my favorites the more I thought he really did a good job I do disagree with him sometimes sometimes he puts moments that I don't think are lame or I didn't think lame but not good enough to be considered the one of the lamest in wrestling history like he put Jeff Jarrett versus Kevin Nash which I thought was a bad match but lame moment in wrestling history no one fucking remembers that match you need to put someone that ref that people would remember like uh Brock Lesnar Goldberg's on Brock Lesnar Goldberg's on there Halloween Havoc 98 with Hogan and Warrior, and then Halloween Havoc 99, or, yeah, 99, with Hogan and Sting, when Hogan taking the pin, um, Medusa dumping the women's title, Hogan stealing the thunder from Bret Hart in WrestleMania 9, and Yokozuna, a lot of it has Hulk Hogan in it, I wonder why, David Arquette winning the WCW title, that one might be my favorite, very, very good series, you guys really have to check it out, Next, I want to plug. He has more subscribers than anyone I know. 11,000 subscribers. But I was talking to Sports Freak, and he's like, Who the hell is this guy? And I'm like, You don't know Matthew of Botchamania? Everyone knows the Botchamanias. And I realize a lot of my subscribers are new. And they're. You guys really have to check out Matthew of Botchamania. Basically, he takes a bunch of. He takes a 9 minute video or 10 minute video comprised with. I'm not lying to you. Probably 50 or 60 clips. Some of them are a little elongated um, of wrestlers fucking up, botching interviews, botching wrestling moves. Some you ba are barely noticeable. Some are really awesome. Uh, his One of his recent ones, he had like a five-minute segment on one of, um, about the King of the Ring 1994. Art Donovan, uh, famous football star for those who don't know, was doing commentary. And uh, he asked every five seconds, how much does this fellow weigh? Oh, he's 500 pounds. He's going to squash him. How could he lose that match? He's 500 pounds. It's awesome. I'm going to put a link. There's so many Botchamanias to commend. I'll just do the one I'm talking about, the King of Ring 1994, since I thought that one was really good, and it sticks up my mind. Okay. Next guy I want to plug is going to be, obviously, New York Sports Week. What more can I say? He's my by far my closest friend on YouTube. We talk on Skype a lot. By the way, Skype, don't expect me to, don't expect me to be on Skype for a pay-per-view for a while. Because it, it, it did kind of ruin lockdown. I had to rewatch lockdown. Not rewatch the whole thing. So when I, know, I know something's crap when it's crap. I rewatched the good matches. And I still stand with my rating. But I realized t Armin's right. Talking on Skype really kind of hurt, hurts it. Uh, don't expect me on Skype for a while. Unless it's the TNA. <laughs> for ROH, you definitely won't see me on Skype. For WWE, maybe, maybe not. Um, for TNA, most likely, yeah. Because if I had to... Waste my time. It'd be one of those. Okay, next guy I want to recommend. This is for all you movie buffs, because I'm a huge movie buff. It's uh, Stan the Movie Man. Stan the Movie Man does from WIMZ.com. Does weekly reviews of movies. You go to WIMZ.com. 
scroll all the way down to the site index, scroll one of those bars, and you click Stand the Movie Man. As you guys know, and you get to vote. He picks five movies. My problem with it, the goods and the bads of it, the bads. Um, he only he puts the movies that are opening that week, and if a movie doesn't get picked, it has no chance of getting reviewed unless. But I can tell you later. Like, I'll give you an example. One of his last videos, um, there was it was a close tie between Observe and Report, which I really wanted to see, and Dragon Ball Evolution, which I had no chance, which I had no desire to see, and Dragon Ball Evolution one. And the next week, Observe and Report was not one of the voting options. It has to be in the opening week, and I find that bad, because sometimes there's a lot of movie opening. But he does have Stan's Choice. You click Stan's Choice, where he decides what he wants to see. I always, I most of the time vote for Stan's Choice, because there's a bunch of movies in the past that he hasn't reviewed. But seriously, check it out. If you guys are a movie, like I am, you'll enjoy it. Okay, part two coming up. Big Rat 3, 10, out. Peace.